Okay, now what we're going to talk about is advanced intervals. Okay. We have already learned that it's critical to make an accurate assessment on contact distance before a violent confrontation begins. While most people look at how close the knife is in order to assess contact distance, we have learned that there are two other factors that will allow us to make a better assessment of when contact distance is achieved. I'm going to typo here. I guess I could put it on there. Of when contact distance is achieved. The most important factor is how close the threat's lead foot is to us. The second most important factor is how spread apart are the threat's feet. And then the third most important factor is how close is the knife to us, okay? Now most people who aren't familiar with knife fighting will be focusing on how close that knife is to them. How close is that knife? We're gonna show you that that's not what really matters, okay? What really matters is how close is his lead foot. Let me show you. So again, this is my lead foot. This is the line of my lead foot. So my lead foot is on that line. So this is what's most important in determining how close this guy is to me. Even if his knife is out here, that's not what's important. That, that knife is now a foot or two closer to me. What's most important is where is that foot. Now what's second most important is how wide are his feet? Not this way, but front and back. So in other words, if he's in a big deep stance like this, he now is not gonna be able to move at me quickly, period. He may be able to take a step and drag, but that step and drag is gonna be grossly limited because his feet are already spread. He's not gonna be able to get further. Now, if he's here like this, well look, that step and drag can come far, okay? So that's why this is important. You see this guy in a low stance like this, this guy has problems. He's gonna have to take a big step up like this and then come through to attack you, okay? And while he's doing this big step up here, guess what? That's when your attack begins. That's when your defense begins. You start moving to the side and this guy's gonna be left high and dry because he's taking a movement that did nothing for him. Okay, he's got his knife out here. He takes this movement. Well, he moved his rear foot two feet. The knife only moved about three inches forward. So again, if he's in his deep stance like this, this guy is a sucker waiting to be uh, waiting to be chopped up. <coughs> if this guy is like this, nice and low here, now he's in that coiled snake stance, he's gonna be a problem. Again, this is not the problem, the knife out here. This is the problem. We'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so in general, when contact is met, we must either be mounting an effective attack or defense, or be trying to maintain imminent contact distance if we don't want to make contact. One of the best ways to defend is to keep moving off the threat's fighting center so that the threat has to reposition himself in order to observe us and orientate himself to us in order for him to perform an attack. Again, this keeps us ahead of the OODA loop. All you have to do is step to the side. If you want to know what I'm talking about, go watch any boxing match, go watch any MMA, and you notice the two guys are circling each other. The reason they're circling is to keep that other guy from being able to walk right in and attack him. He's got to reorient that attack. And of course, what they're trying to do is as that guy reorients, they're looking for an opening to come in and attack. Okay, so to better understand when contact distance is met, let's look at, we're gonna look at a knife forward style versus the typical, uh, excuse me. We're gonna look at our knife forward style where the knife is held in this uh, chamber versus the typical knife forward style where the knife hand is extended further forward. Uh, from our stance, we're going to uh, reach our knife hand out to where we make contact uh, with our empty-handed partner's hand that is extended towards us. Then we're going to uh, return our hand to its proper position and slip attack toward him with an effective attack. We're now gonna re repeat the attack, but we're gonna hold our hand in the more forward position to mount the attack. And we're gonna find out what the difference is. So again, we're gonna do a, uh, a slip attack with the knife held in a more forward stance, and we're gonna do a slip attack with the knife held in the, uh, in the chamber position down by the hip, where we chamber it, and we're gonna look at what those two uh, differences are. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, use these cones as a reference point, draw a little line here. I'm gonna set my foot here. So here I am, I've got this knife in a forward, well, let's start from this one. Okay, so I've got this knife in a nice tuck position, nice safe position, and a guard here. My feet are uh, relatively close together. My knees are bent. 
and I'm ready to strike. Just gonna do a slow strike. So I come out here and I strike. Bam, so if I really reach out, I can touch this, okay? Now look at where the knife was. The knife is way back here. I step out with step and drag, and boom, I can touch this. Okay, if you drag, it gives you a little, that extra little inch I need. Now let's put the knife here like this. Well, the knife is further out, right? I should be able to go further, right? That's a problem, that's what people think. They think because the knife is out, that now I'm, I'm, I'm more of a threat towards him. Well, guess what? I can still only get to where I got before. Why? Because it's where the lead foot is. Now, if this lead foot changes, then I'm here. Well, guess what? Now I'm gonna be all on top of this guy. But it's not because the knife is out further. I'm still just on top of him the same amount. So again, it's where this front foot is, is what you have to be watching, not the knife, where you see how close or how far you are from this guy. So you wanna maintain your distance based on where the foot is, not where the hand is, okay? The guy holds his hand out like this, and he's measuring himself uh, based on where the knife is, your knife is, he's gonna bring himself right into the range where you can slash this hand up. So this is a guy you love, a guy who leaves a knife out here. You take that first slash at it, you hit it or not, he's gonna retract it. Well now guess what? Now as you finish your drag, you're gonna be right here to come in on him. You're gonna be able to cone in on where his hand is with your free hand, and you're gonna chop this guy up. Why? Because he didn't control his intervals right. He thought he was safe because your, his knife is out and your knife was hidden back. Okay, so these are, again, positioning concepts we're talking about. Okay, so in my, uh, in my narrative, I was talking about the, the uh, attack E having his hand out. And again, what we're gonna do, we're not gonna hold his hand out, we're just gonna have, uh, stand in front, in front of him. And now I know I can, you know, keep right straight in front of him. Now I know I can cut him good, okay. So anyways, this is what I wanna ask you. When I'm standing like this, does this threaten you more, or does this threaten you more? That one, right, it looks like this is more threatening. But really, after you see the footwork, yeah. which one is more threatening? They're equal, they should be equal. This is not more threatening than this. And as a matter of fact, from a counter standpoint, or an attackability standpoint for you, this is the less threatening, okay? Because uh, I have less chance to really do anything from here. And the nice part is, is if you attack, what it's, it's just sitting out here vulnerable, okay? or I have to retreat it, and again, that's what you want, because now that lets you fill the gap and you put the cut on me, okay? So again, I'm not able to attack you any better here than I am from here. And again, this one, I lose a lot of that <clears throat> momentum right there. I don't have a chance really to make a new decision. I can start coming here, and as your hands come towards the knife, you know, I have a chance to do something else. Whereas if it's here, and I'm, I'm feeding you the knife. If I'm out here, I'm gonna I'm, I'm feeding it right to him. See what I'm saying? Whereas here, now I'm not really feeding him. He doesn't know where I'm going. I'm I'm uh I'm delaying uh, my tell. Is that what I'm trying to say? I'm uh it's not the word I'm really looking for, but that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm not telegraphing as much. That's what it is. I'm not telegraphing. If I have the blade out here, well I'm gonna have to telegraph. Okay? If I have the blade here, where's it going? Yeah, see, where and where did he go immediately? Where did he go? Did he go to a nice safe spot down here? No, it's instinctual for the hands to come up. It's that, it's that fetal position, instinctual type thing. And that's what he did because he didn't know where he was. So he went to that thing that has saved mankind from the time, uh, well, it saved, saved the evolution of mankind, that motion. Saved us from chimps until we became, what are we, cro I always forget, we're cro -Magnum? No, we're homos, uh, homo erectus, whatever we are. I'm like, yeah, we're homo sapiens. <laughs> homo erectus was right for us, right? Yeah, I didn't like that for a while. Anyway, so I'm not going to go there. Uh, so anyways, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, so anyway, you can see how that's different. And for him, you know, try that out on both sides. Try it out here, and you'll see that you can't strike any further. You know, going this way versus this way. It depends on where the lead foot is and the stance, okay? Then try it from this way, and you'll see that as soon as this guy gets his knife out here, it, it looks pretty daunting. Versus this one, all of a sudden you feel like, oh, I'm far away from this guy. No, you're the same distance from this guy. This is something you have to understand as an advanced knife fighter, that there is no difference in my, uh, in my, uh, no, no, in my uh, threat, in my uh, danger, in my ability to attack you. This doesn't improve it. It doesn't change. This doesn't change my ability to bring this knife on you. Okay, my, uh, what do they call it when you have distance? Uh, my range, 
my range of motion is not increased because this knife is out here or this knife is back. My range is still the same, okay? Your range versus me is still the same. This doesn't change it. Now this will make you worry in your mind if you're not a trained knife fighter. This will make you worry. Oh my gosh, look how close that knife is to me. That's not what you should be thinking. You should be thinking, oh my gosh, I have a fish. I'm going to chop up his hand. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. That's what you should be thinking. As soon as he puts his knife out there, all efforts on this knife, spinning the center line so that he can't uh, mount a counterattack to you and just chop this hand up. That's what this guy is saying. Kill me. Kill me. Uh, at least maim me. Please. That's what he's saying to you, okay? That's what you have to understand. This guy right here, this is the guy that you have to be like, oh shit, I'm in for a fight. This guy knows what he's doing. He's hiding that knife. He's fooling me. He's trying to fool me on the interval. He may not know that he's trying to fool you on the interval, but he is trying to lure me in with this attack right here, okay? Okay, so to show the actual danger we're in versus the perceived danger, what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat the attacks except for the good guy is gonna be positioned uh, the five feet away, you know, contact distance, right on the edge of contact distance, from the lead foot when the knife is back and from the tip of the knife when the knife is forward. And again, this is just to re-accentuate uh, the amount of danger that you're actually in, okay? Uh, let's see. Okay, so basing our theory on the perceived threat, if I'm here, his perceived threat, go ahead and put your hand out, that's where we're just at the edge of contact distance. So again, this looks threatening to him, but this looks more threatening, okay? Now, so where do we want to get an equal threat look so that the threat is perceived the same? Well, now the tip of the blade is here, okay? And now the tip of the blade is there. So if you're not experienced, the perceived threat from this and from this are the same. But again, as we can see, here I can reach out and touch. Here I can't reach out and touch, and I'm really overextending here. I can't even reach out and touch. So again, this is not what you need to worry about. It's not where the tip of the blade is, the five feet. It's where the front foot is. That's what you have to be looking at when you're looking at contact distance. Again, this guy is going to be thinking he's well within contact distance. He might get scared and back up. Well, this is a guy who doesn't really want a knife fight. That's the first thing you can say to yourself. This is a guy you can talk down, okay? Take a little step forward. He takes a little step forward. Now this guy wants to re-get this distance. Again, this guy doesn't want a knife fight. Probably doesn't know how to knife fight. That's why he's holding the knife like that. This guy right here, though, you take that little step in, and he's going to light you up, okay? Because you're close. He has a better idea of what he's doing. So again, the perception here and here might be the same because you're going off the tip of the blade, but it's grossly different. Okay? Here the guy can't even reach out and touch you, so now you have a lot of maneuvering you can do if you want to attack this guy. You have a lot of maneuvering you can do, and if this guy starts moving back, now you know you've got a, a fish on the hook. I mean, this is the guy that you're going to win a knife fight against uh, easily. So, you know, then the decision is up to you. Uh, again, once it becomes a knife fight, you're both equally guilty. It's not a self-defense situation anymore, so you have to be careful where that line is crossed. Okay, so what are we looking for here? Okay, what we're looking for is that when we attack with a contact distance based on where the knife is, we will find ourselves closer to or farther from the attack than we need to be to perform an effective attack. Specifically, when we begin an attack or defense based on contact position from the knife, when the hand is held forward, we will be judging contact distance uh, shorter than it actually is. So in other words, we think we're going from the knife, so we think contact distance is five feet, but again, if that knife is held out two feet in front of the, uh, the other guy, you're actually seven feet away from this guy. And uh, you know now as you come in with your attack, you're gonna wind up being stuck exactly where the threat wants you to be for his defense and counterattacks, unless of course you're able to immediately defang him during your uh, initial attack, uh, which is advantageous to you in that situation. But again, did you do that? Maybe you went for a full attack because you saw his knife here uh, and you felt you were inside a contact distance. Okay, so meanwhile, if we begin an attack or defense based on contact position from the knife hand, when the knife hand is held rearward, 
we will be judging contact distance longer than it actually is. Uh, so uh, we think it's way back here. So wow, we're far away. When in actuality, uh, we're going to be, you know, the distance from the the knife is going to be the same as the feet. So it's actually uh, harder to get mixed up in that situation. But if you were, you're going to be thinking that you're uh, much closer uh, than you actually. Uh, what, what I'm saying, you're going to think you're further. You're going to think that you're further than you actually are because the knife looks like it's further back. And again, you might wind up getting jammed up and not have enough space uh, to move toward a flanking position for your follow-up cuts. And now the fight will degrade into a race for who stabs or slashes or is able to safely uh, create a gap the quickest. And again, this is just where uh, those reverse uh, Chinese grip fighters want you, okay? Uh, because that's where their, their good is in these tight situations like this. And once you get outside of those, they're gonna have a problem. And so that's why, you know, this guy has this knife held in a, in a Chinese stance and you're thinking, <coughs> oh, I'm pretty far away from this guy. Well, he brings these hands up to fill that gap. Boom, uh, you've stepped right into his little area where he wants you to be, that in close stuff, because you thought you were actually further away than you thought you were. And again, that's not a big problem for our style, uh, but it will lead to an advantage if the guy is holding uh, the knife. You will be giving, let's say, uh, percentage points towards the advantage to the Chinese uh, knife fighter, the guy who's holding the reverse grip. Okay, so lastly, when we judge contact distances from the lead feet, we are in the correct spot to unleash the most uh, effective attacks. So let's look at that real quick. Okay, so to demonstrate this from the, uh, from let's say the good guy's point of view, uh, when he's gonna attack this guy. So here we are here, and just come in and throw a quick attack at me. Boom, see how quick he's able to get it, okay? So let's say again, he perceives this same contact distance based on where my knife is. Now come in at me. Bam, look how easy that is for me. And again, that was because he thought his contact distance was shorter than it actually is, okay? That's a big problem. So that's why you have to be able to realize that. So now, where would you really want to be if I'm here? This is contact distance. How can we be sure? Because we can reach out and touch each other. We're within contact distance. So this is where he wants to attack from because he's going to get me. And again, if I'm holding my knife out here, how's this attack going to look? You're going to slash his hand, quickly come in behind with that hand, hold it down, and now finish the attack. So you can see how easy that was, even though it looked like, wow, that knife is only uh, two feet away from me. Well, again, that's right where you want to be because this is not the determining factor of what con when contact distance has been met. It's that front foot, because that front foot is gonna dictate when we can actually make contact, okay? If I step out here, guess what? We can't make contact. We're too far out. We have to be, I mean, you have to be, uh, you have to be a very highly skilled martial artist to be able to put a blade or something on a guy from this far away. And you can't just be a highly skilled martial artist. You have to be in great physical condition on top of it. You can have all the skills in the world, but if you're uh, old and fat like I've gotten, you know, it's just not gonna happen. Now in the old days, could I reach out and touch him uh, with a step and drag from here? Certainly I could have. I didn't have to push this extra 50 pounds of weight. I had uh, more flexibility so that I could make longer strides, that type of stuff. Uh, I had more uh, energy. I was in better shape with my legs. I had more uh, ability to uh, propel my body forward. And again, it was a lighter body with a greater range of motion. Uh, because of my flexibility. So again, uh, you know, just because you're at this distance, you have to be looking at how this guy moves also. Does this guy look like he can fly from way over there and chop me up? Uh, if he looks like he can, you know, then you need to adjust your contact distance. So again, intervals aren't as simple as this is contact distance, this is eminent contact distance. No, for this guy, this may be within his range of contact distance. Again, what's contact distance? With one step forward, I can reach out and touch this guy. <coughs> Excuse me. With one step forward, I can reach out and touch this guy. So you have to be careful what you're doing. Does a bigger guy have a longer contact distance? Yes, he does, because he can step further. Okay? He can reach out further with his hand. So all these things have to come into play when you're getting in this knife fight. And again, we'll be looking at how to employ these uh, when we start looking at uh, actual fighting sequences uh, towards the uh, end of the course. That's like lesson uh, eight and nine picked it up kind of a little by little by just watching people talk about footwork in different styles and then I was able to uh, 
decipher exactly what the fuck they meant, you know, to put this in here. Believe me, this is somewhere inside of Miyamoto stuff. Yeah. You know, if you reread it, you'll be able to get some of that stuff out of there. All right. So hopefully now uh, we understand uh, that where the lead foot is of the threat, where the lead foot of the threat is in relation to us is more important than where his knife is in relation to us in determining proper contact distance. So again, that's the most important thing when we're trying to uh, determine these intervals is where is his lead foot, okay? Uh, however, our distance from the lead foot uh, of the threat can still be deceiving. And that's where number two comes in, okay? Uh, this comes into effect when the threat stands with his feet too wide apart or too far apart. This is because when we stand with our feet too far apart, our mobility is severely limited. Again, it helps us with our base and our balance but again, it limits our mobility. Uh, with our feet closer, our step and drags are longer, as we saw earlier, uh, than they are if our feet are far apart. Also, it is much harder to get your center of gravity moving when stepping through if your uh, feet are far apart. Let me make sure that's what it says. And uh, for us as night fighters, it is important to remember that if the threat's legs are far apart, we want to be closer, okay? So the wider his legs are, front and back, the closer we can move in. Again, if he's a real tall guy, that's a little deceptive because he still is gonna have those long legs to make those steps. But in general, if his feet are far apart, he's not gonna be able to reach out and touch us as easily or as quickly. So we can even move in closer at that point, okay? So we're looking at that five feet, all of a sudden four feet might be the range where we really wanna be at. Uh, as far as our distance from the threat's knife, if we judge our contact distances based on the threat's front foot and adjust the distance based on his stance and his size and estimated skill level, our distance from the knife will be taken care of and we're going to be in the right spot. Okay, so what we're going to look at next is, uh, is feints uh, to, get us to, uh, to help get us to that correct interval. So again, uh, this knife fight starts off and we're at an interval where we're safe, okay? But we want to get that interval a little tighter before we begin our final assault, okay? So how do we do that? We use a feint to trick this guy into thinking the fight has started when what we're really moving into is the contact position that we want to be at to begin our final assault. That's what a feint is going to help us do. So we'll start looking at a feint, okay, again, this guy has props. He's gonna have to take a big step up like this and then come through to attack you, okay? And while he's doing this big step up here, guess what? That's when your attack begins. That's when your defense begins. You start moving to the side. And this guy is gonna be left high and dry because he's taking a movement that did nothing for him. Okay, he's got his knife out here. He takes his movement. Well, he moved his rear foot two feet. The knife only moved about three inches forward. So again, if he's in his deep stance like this, that's not what really matters, okay? What really matters is how close is his lead foot. Let me show you. So again, this is my lead foot. This is the line of my lead foot. So my lead foot is on that line. So this is what's most important in determining how close this guy is to me. Even if his knife is out here, that's not what's important. That, that knife is now a foot or two closer to me. What's most important is where is that foot. Now what's second most important is how wide are his feet. Not this way, but front and back. So in other words, if he's in a big deep stance like this, he now is not gonna be able to move at me quickly, period. He may be able to take a step and drag, but that step and drag is gonna be grossly limited because his feet are already spread. He's not gonna be able to get further. Now if he's here like this, well look, that step and drag can come far, okay? So that's why this is important. You see this guy in a low stance like this. Okay, now what we're gonna talk about is advanced intervals, okay? We have already learned that it's critical to make an accurate assessment on contact distance before a violent confrontation begins. While most people look at how close the knife is in order to assess contact distance, we have learned that there are two other factors that will allow us to make a better assessment of when contact distance is achieved. I'm gonna typo here. I guess I could put them on there. Of when contact distance is achieved. The most important factor is how close the threat's lead foot is to us. 
The second most important factor is how spread apart are the threat's feet. And then the third most important factor is how close is the knife to us, okay? Now most people who aren't familiar with knife fighting will be focusing on how close that knife is to them. How close is that knife? We're gonna show you that 